WNBA star and two-time Olympic gold medalist Brittany Griner is back on U.S. soil after being wrongfully imprisoned in Russia for nearly 10 months. Griner was freed in a high-profile prisoner swap for Russian arms dealer Victor Boot, a deal negotiated by my next guest. Joining me now, Ambassador Roger D. Carstens, Special Presidential Envoy for Hostage Affairs. Ambassador, thank you very much for coming to the Sunday show. Um, How does it feel? Well, first off, thanks for having me. Um, and secondly, it feels great. It's great to have Brittany back. Uh, but I will say at the same time, even though Brittany's back, we're still working on Paul Whelan. And in fact, the White House is convening a planning session tomorrow morning mm. to discuss the next steps on bringing Paul home. Um, and I want to talk about Paul, uh, mm. Paul Whelan in, in a moment. But I think we've shown that we've shown the picture several times. You were on the plane with with Brittany Grenner. You were there on the tarmac. You were mm. there on the plane. How is she doing? Yeah, she's doing great. She's in uh, great hands right now with the uh, team down in Fort Sam Houston. Uh, the Department of Defense is uh, giving her some great care. Uh, on the plane, she was just wonderful. Uh, she jumped on the plane and, and went right to saying hi to everyone, making a personal connection, shaking hands, saying thank you. And then on an 18-hour flight, I spent about 12 hours just talking about everything under the sun. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually tried to give her some space to say, look, you know, you probably want to decompress after 10 months in a Russian prison. And she said, no, I want to talk. I want to relate to people. And I found someone who was just absolutely wonderful, kind, generous, interesting, and above all, authentic. Uh, what were the hurdles in, in getting Brittany released? And how did the deal come together? Well, we don't like to talk about the deal, and here's why. We still have to go back and, and continue the negotiations. Uh, so even though it's kind of interesting to, to, to relay, it's better at times to just keep our cards to our chest because we have to go back. But what I can tell you, it's been a long, hard-fought process. These, these uh, efforts are exceedingly rare. They don't happen very often. And so when they happen and we do get that victory, that win, we have to celebrate it. But again, we're always ready to go on to the next case. You know, uh, before we went on air, I was just asking you as a point of personal fascination, are you more unsuccessful at mm -hmm. this than you are successful? And uh, tell everyone what you told me in terms of how many people you've actually been able to get released. Well, this administration has brought well over a dozen people home in just the last nine months. And these people come from all walks of American life. So it's really uh, the people that we bring back are, in a way, kind of reflect the diversity of this country. Um, but I, I wouldn't mind sharing a story, if I may, to kind of, to kind of relay this. When Brittany got off the plane, uh, she, of course, connected with Sherelle. And then shortly thereafter, she stood in front of a huge American flag in this aircraft hangar in San Antonio, Texas. And she called everyone over to take photos with her. And as she was doing that, she would ask them what their names were, look them in the eyes, shake hands with them. And then there was, at one point, there were some army drivers, about five soldiers, low-ranking soldiers over by the vans. And Sherelle got out, went forward and called them forward and said, hey, even you guys, if you participated in this, come over here. And those soldiers took uh, photos with Brittany Griner. And I thought that, to me, was probably the best moment of this whole recovery, seeing Brittany in front of that big American flag, taking photos with all the people that, that worked hard to bring her home. It shows you the kind of woman that she is. And just re remarkable. Indeed. Clearly. Um, let's talk about Paul Whelan. Uh, as we all know, the deal, unfortunately, did not involve his release. Mm -hmm. um, I want you to listen to what um, Paul Whelan, um, his recent message to President Biden. We'll talk about it on the other side. I would say that if um, a message could go to President Biden that, um, you know, this is a precarious situation that needs to be resolved quickly. And um, I would hope that he and his administration would do everything they could to get me home, um, regardless of the price they might have to pay at this point. Your reaction to uh, Mr. Whelan? Well, I talked to Paul on Friday. I spent about 30 minutes on the phone with him. He was able to call from a Russian prison. And he was uh, obviously uh, unsatisfied. You know, you, of course, would love to have been on that plane. But I told Paul, I said it was either one or no one. We could either bring Brittany home uh, or no one was coming home. And he understood that. And he said, congratulations to Brittany Griner. Tell her, he asked me to pass on uh, his regards and say, tell her that I'm grateful that she's release, released. He said, this is a big win for the United States of America. And I told Paul, don't lose hope. Don't lose faith. We're already planning and working on bringing you home. We're coming to bring you home. And I said, well, I, I additionally said, I want you to know this. This president and this secretary of state are focused on this effort. So, Paul, keep the faith. We're coming. Talk more about um, uh, about the meeting you said earlier in this interview. There's a meeting tomorrow. 
about about Paul Whelan and uh, how to uh, bringing him home. Yeah. What? Talk more about this meeting. Who's going to be there? What, what actually are you going to discuss? Well, we bring the, all members of the interagency process. So any member of the federal government that's involved in this enterprise comes in and we start discussing so options. But here's what I'll share with you. Even before we get on that plane to go get Brittany Griner, we're thinking about Paul. When I'm on the way back, I'm talking with Brittany. I, I'm actually celebrating this win. And my brain is also still working on Paul Whelan. So it's not that but I've, I've heard someone said uh, uh, Paul's been left behind. And actually, you know, I kind of understand where they might come, but the way I see it, we're always in motion to bring people home. And so uh, Paul's going to be phase number two. We're, we're working hard. We're coming up with different ways to do this. We will not fail this mission. Uh, real quickly, we have a, a minute left, but I got to get you on two things. Uh, Russian President Putin, in, in response to all this, seemed to open a door, at least by saying, you know, we're paraphrasing, I mean, we're willing to talk about anything when it comes to this sort of thing. Did you view that as an opening? I would say this. Uh, we're having that meeting tomorrow, and we're going to factor in and discuss everything. And I'd also say this. Uh, even though the, um, uh, someone might make a pronouncement like that, the thing that we really need to wrap our hands around and get better at, and we are, or are pushing forward, is that it's deterring this as an effort. Uh, so President Biden signed an executive order this summer to give us new tools to deter. Secretary Blinken's working on a coalition to fight this. And the goal is to make it so we never have to do this again, that we end this practice forever. How confident are you you'll be able to get Paul, Paul Whelan home soon? The timeline's always hard because the other side gets a vote. But I can tell you one thing, in terms of what we're doing that soon, we're doing that tomorrow.